Welcome back to Visual Civil. In this video, we are implementing all the learnings of previous part 1 video in a design numerical. The link of part 1 video is given in the description. If you have not seen the part 1 video, then please go through it for better understanding before watching this part 2. So grab your calculators and let's get started on creating strong durable slabs that stand the test of time. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay updated on our latest videos. So let us design a continuous RCC roof slab supported on RCC beam for a classroom 7 meter wide and 14 meter long. The RCC beams are spaced at 3.5 meter intervals. The width of beam is 230 mm. The superimposed load is 3 kN per meter square and finishing load is expected as 1 kN per meter square. Use M20 grade concrete and FE415 steel. One way RCC slab supporting floor or roof loads are generally designed as beams of unit width. For a given type of support condition, the span by depth ratio applicable for beams in IS456 is also valid for the slabs. Since the percentage of reinforcement in slab is generally low in the range of 0.3 to 0.5 percent, a span to depth ratio of 25 to 30 is more appropriate by considering the modification factor for FE415 steel. So let us consider a span to depth ratio equal to 30 in this design. Based on the span to depth ratio, we get the effective depth equal to 120 mm. Considering effective cover of 30 mm, the total thickness of slab is equal to 150 mm. As all the slab spans are same, we can assume a uniform thickness of 150 mm for all the spans. In next step, let us compute effective span. As per clause 22.2b, in case of continuous slab, if the width of the support is less than 1 by 12th of the clear span, the effective span shall be as in clause 22.2a. In this design, the clear span is equal to 3.27 meter. Therefore, 1 by 12th of clear span is equal to 272.5 mm, which is more than support or beam width of 230 mm. Hence, let us compute the effective span of slab as per clause 22.2a. As per this clause, the effective span is the least of clear span plus effective depth and center to center of the support. Therefore, effective span is equal to 3.39 meter. In next step, let us compute the loads acting on the slab. The self weight or a dead load of a slab is computed by multiplying slab thickness with concrete density. This is equal to 3.75 kN per meter square. The dead load of the floor finish is 1 kN per meter square. As a result, total dead load of the slab is 4.75 kN per meter square. The imposed or live load on the slab is given as 3 kN per meter square. Now let us get the factor dead load and imposed load by multiplying with 1.5. In next step, let us get the bending moment and shear force. As the spans of continuous slab are equal, uniformly loaded and more than 3 in number, the bending moment and shear force can be computed using the coefficients given in table number 12 and 13 of IS code respectively. Accordingly, let us compute first the bending moment based on coefficient given in table number 12. As per the earlier discussion in part 1, the equations to get the bending moment at different sections using the coefficients are shown here. After substituting the values of dead load intensity, imposed load intensity and effective span, we get the bending moment values at various sections. Here 
the maximum bending moment of 13.93 kN meter is occurring at support next to the end support. We will use this maximum moment to check the depth of slab. Now let us compute the maximum shear force using the table 13 of IS code. As per the coefficients given in this table, the maximum shear force occurs at the outer side of the support next to the end support. Let us make the equation to compute the maximum shear force using coefficients as discussed in part 1 video. After substituting the values in the equation, we get maximum shear force equal to 23.65 kN. In next step, let us check the adequacy of assumed depth of slab for the maximum design moment. For this, use the expression given in section C of clause G1.1. In this equation, put the value of maximum design moment in place of EMU limb. Consider the value of a B equal to 1000 mm as we considered the 1 meter width of slab. Get the value of XOMAX by D from clause 38.1 of IS code. After putting all the values in the expression and solving, we get the minimum effective depth required to withstand the maximum bending equal to 71 mm which is less than provided effective depth of 120 mm. After knowing the adequacy of the thickness of slab, let us compute the area of a steel required for the calculated design bending moment MU at the different midspan and support sections. For this, we can refer the formula given in clause G1.1b of IS code or a simplified equation number 2. First, let us compute the area of a steel required at middle of end span for design moment of 12 kilonewton meter. After substituting all the values in the equation and solving, we get required area of the steel equal to 291 mm square. Next, compute the area of a steel required at middle of interior span for design moment of 9.43 kN meter. After solving, we get it equal to 226 mm square. Similarly, the area of a steel required at support next to the end support for design moment of 13.93 kN meter is 342 mm square and at interior support for design moment of 12.57 kN meter it is 306 mm square. Now let us find the minimum area of a steel required as per clause 26.5.2.1. As per this clause the minimum area of a steel is equal to 0.12% of cross sectional area of the slab. After computation we get it 180 mm square. This is less than calculated area of the steel. Next, find the required spacing of 10 mm diameter of bar for all the calculated area of the steel. So, first let us get the spacing for the steel at middle of end span. After calculation, this is 269 mm. Similarly, compute the spacing for steel at middle of interior span at support next to the end support and interior support. As per IS code, the spacing between parallel main bars shall not be more than 3 times the effective depth or 300 mm whichever is smaller. Hence, adopt the spacing as 200 mm. So, provide 10 mm dia bar at 200 mm center to center along the span with alternate bars are bent up at support. Also, provide extra top bars at support at 400 mm center to center to make the spacing of the top bars equal to 200 mm. Let us see this main bar arrangement in three dimensional diagram. The main steel bar arrangement in all the spans are as shown in this animation.
In next step, let us get the required area of a distribution steel. As per IS code, the distribution steel should be equal to minimum required steel. Hence, the required distribution steel is equal to 180 mm square. Adopt 8 mm dia bar for distribution steel. The required spacing of bar is 279 mm. As per IS code, the spacing of bar should not be more than 5 times the effective depth or 450 mm whichever is smaller. Hence, adopt the spacing as 250 mm. So, provide 8 mm diameter bar at 250 mm center to center perpendicular to the span as distribution steel. The distribution steel bar management in all the spans are as shown in this animation. In next step, check the feasibility of slab section and reinforcement for the shear stress. The nominal shear stress in slab due to shear force is obtained by using the equation given in clause 40.1 of IS456. Putting the values of shear force, width and effective depth of slab, we get shear stress equal to 0.197 Newton per mm square. Now let us compare this shear stress with the design shear strength of the slab. We can get this design shear strength based on the percentage area of a steel provided and grade of concrete from table 19 of IS456. So let us calculate the percentage area of the steel provided. By providing the values of area of a steel provided, width and depth of slab, we get the percentage of the steel as 0.33%. Using this percentage of the steel and grade of concrete, which is M20 here, compute the value of design shear strength tau c using linear interpolation. So after linear interpolation, we get tau c equal to 0.398 Newton per mm square. As per IS code, the design shear strength for the concrete slab is equal to tau c into k. The value of k for the overall depth of slab 150 mm is 1.3. Therefore, the design shear strength is equal to 0.51 Newton per mm square, which is more than acting shear stress. Hence, the slab is safe in shear. In the last step, let us check the feasibility of provided slab depth for deflection control as per the specified span to depth ratio. Here, the provided span to depth ratio is equal to 28.25. As per clause 23.2.1 for continuous slab, the basic span to depth ratio is equal to 26. This ratio needs to be multiplied by modification factor. This modification factor can be computed from figure 4 of IS code based on percentage tension reinforcement and value of steel stress of service load FS. Here the percentage steel provided is 0.33. The value of FS will be computed from the expression given in figure 4. After putting the values of FY, area of a steel required and provided, we get FS equal to 209.46 Newton per mm square. Now, from the graph for percentage steel of 0.33 and FS equal to 209.46, the approximate value of modification factor is 1.7. So, after multiplying the basic span to depth ratio by modification factor, we get maximum allowable span to depth ratio as 44.2, which is more than provided ratio. Hence, the depth provided is safe in deflection check. Finally, let us see the design summary. A continuous RCC roof slab supported on RCC beams for a classroom is designed with M20 grade of concrete and FE415 steel. The total slab thickness needs to be kept as 150 mm. 10 mm dia bars at 200 mm center to center with alternate bars bent up at support 
needs to be provided as main reinforcement for all the spans. While 8 mm dia bars at 250 mm center to center needs to be provided as a distribution reinforcement. That's a wrap on this part 2 video. If you found this video helpful, give us thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more design insights. Drop your queries or experiences in the comments below and we might feature them in our next video. Until then, keep learning.